You probably know already that Scandinavian folk music is and has been defined mostly by one instrument, fiddle, for decades and even centuries now. And this means that the instrument has influenced the music and also the music has influenced the instrument. And we're gonna see how in this video, because we're gonna talk about fiddle tunings. <laughs> Emily Valskin here. In this video we're gonna talk about fiddle tunings. Fiddle, the most prominent instrument in Scandinavian folk music, has been tuned in different ways across the ages, the decades and depending on the tunes to give different sounds and different harmonies and possibilities to the music. Especially if you're a classical violinist from the start, you might be very surprised by that, but it's a really really nice and interesting subject. In this video I'm gonna talk about fiddle, obviously, <laughs> mostly fiddle. If you're playing an instrument that is close to the fiddle, like the same family, like viola or cello, or that is close to in terms of logic, such as mandolin or mandola or mandocello, stick with me, that's very interesting for you. If you're playing another type of instrument, that might be less interesting, but I still think it's an important thing to know about because, as said, Scandinavian folk music is a lot about fiddles and especially if you play, for example, a harmony instrument like guitar it's very good to, to know a bit what the history has been like and still is about the harmonies that the fiddle can play in and what are the most common ones and so on. Also, I'm not gonna talk about nickel harpa tunings in this video because the history of nickel harpa and the history of fiddle are quite very different and the tunings, the traditional tunings, are really not the same. So, no mention of nickel harpa. Of course, if you have a nickel harpa, you can try these tunings on your nickel harpa, that's totally fine, but it's not the same history for the two instruments, basically. Also, two little disclaimers before I really get into the subject. First one, when I'm gonna say Scandinavia or Scandinavian in this video, I'm gonna mean the Scandinavian peninsula, so Sweden and Norway. I am not in this video gonna include Iceland, Denmark and Finland. This is not because I don't like these countries, it's because I don't know as much about them and because I am pretty sure that fiddle has not been as prominent in their folk music as it was in Norway and Sweden. So I don't want to talk about a fiddle tradition that I don't know about and also I think like, for example, in Denmark, maybe there were not that many fiddles and maybe there were other instruments that were that had more of a history in the folk music, so I don't want to say wrong things, so I'm gonna stick with Sweden and Norway. Also, all what I'm gonna say about fiddle is gonna be about normal fiddle, usual fiddle, like this, not hard on the fiddle. But many of the tunings, and actually I think all of them, are also found on Hardanger fiddles or Hardingfeles. I have put to you there on the map the region of Hardingfele in Norway, so this, it's this region. And what is important to understand is that those dots are not showing like a very precise limit where there is no Hardingfele anymore and there are no normal fiddles anymore. There has been both instruments mixing together, on, especially on the, like, the edges, especially here and there. So you have had lots of influences from the Harding Philly on the normal fiddle and the other way around. So basically if you're playing Harding Philly or if you want to adapt what I'm gonna say to a Harding fiddle, you can just take the notes I'm gonna talk about and just raise them one full tone up and then you have Harding Philly tuning, basically. I'm sure there are more tunings in the Harding Philly tradition than on the normal fiddle tradition but I don't know about them, so I'm just gonna talk about normal fiddle. All this being said, let's dig into the subject. Why tuning your fiddle in different ways? Because it's interesting, because it's giving your instruments different possibilities and different sounds. For example, if you tune with an open tuning with lots of Ds, for example, or lots of As, you can play open strings, you can pluck your strings and it's gonna sound good because it's a chord already or a harmony already. 
Also, what is really interesting is that when you tune your fiddle, especially in open tunings, you will have more sound from your instrument. Why that? Because when you play on, for example, a A, but like with one finger, for example, on your fiddle, the open A string resonates as well. You have probably noticed that on your instrument when you are tuned in a very classical G, D, A, E tuning already. And when you tune more open strings to match the harmony of the tune you're playing, you will have more of this effect. So your instrument is gonna sound more. When you're tuned in specific tunings and you're playing in the right key for them, your open strings are gonna function like resonance strings, like sympathetic strings, as on a viola d'amore or a nickel harpa or a harding fele. So it's a plus to your sound. And I think these tunings uh, were very prominent, especially in countryside areas. And this is probably due to the fact that fiddlers needed to have instruments sounding a lot because you need to make people dance. Before there was any um, amplification of the sound, it was just only acoustic, so the fiddlers needed a lot of power to be heard at the other end of the room, especially when you have people dancing on a wooden floor with big shoes, it's sounding a lot, so you need really a lot of, of sound. And also, my guess is that maybe the fiddles in the countryside areas were not that finely made, so they didn't have that very good projecting sound as maybe the better instruments had. So one way of giving more sound to their instrument was to tune them in open tunings so they would get extra sound from the resonating open strings. That's just my guess, but I think it's a pretty pretty correct one. Tell me if you don't agree, <laughs> but I think it's uh, probably one of the reasons why the different tunings were used. To just give more sound. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a bunch of different tunings that I've heard played in or that I've heard talked about and that I have played on myself for usual fiddle. Some are linked to the Harding Fille tradition, so it's a bit uh, not that sharp of a border between the two actually. I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna explain the pros and cons of them. And at the end of the video, I'm also gonna give you a bunch of advice, which can be very useful, especially if you're only starting to play in different tunings, because that's a bit of a scary thing to do, especially in the beginning. Okay, so the first tuning I want to talk about is the classical one, the usual one, so G, D, A, E. It's nothing very exotic, it's just very classical, and what is interesting for me is that it seems that this tuning has been more present in the areas where you had big cities, so lots of people, and or the areas that were maybe countryside but that were richer. And um, that is my guess, it's not an official theory, but I think this has to do with the fact that folk musicians were very influenced by classical musicians. And to have classical musicians, you need to have a bit of money, to, like, for example, pay an orchestra, because that costs a lot. So noble families or big cities maybe had more money, and so they would have more classical musicians, and these would have more influence on the fiddlers. Um, I have an example for this with Helsingland, so this region in Sweden, where you have a music that is very close to classical music, at least to my ears, not only, but there is a classical feeling to a lot of tunes, and I think this is because it was not very far away from Stockholm and it was a countryside region but with big families and with quite a lot of money. So you have, for example, beautifully decorated farms and you have um, <coughs> very good textile work as well. And you have also tunes that are sounding more classical. So I think all this goes together and it shows a richer lifestyle than in other like countryside regions, I don't know, maybe bigger or there, or in different places in Sweden. This tuning is obviously the most practical one and also the most polyvalent one, because it's the most logical one. Because you have just fifths all the way through the instrument, it's working very well with our fingers, it's not for nothing that classical players are tuned like that, that most fiddlers are tuned like that as well. And it's the tuning on which you can play most of the tunes, including some that are supposed to be played in other tunings. Um, not all of them, some are just not possible to play on GDAE, but 
most of them, you can still play them on GDAE. This tuning is also called G-Bass, just simply G-Boss in Swedish because, well, G-Bass, and this is opposed to the next tuning I'm gonna talk about, A-Bass. So the second tuning I want to talk about is A, D, A, E. It's called also A-Bass, or sometimes Obstemt, as opposed to Nietstemt, so tuned up as opposed to tuned down, which is G-Bass. And it's the second most common tuning in Scandinavia. I would say it's probably as common as the G, G bass tuning. I'm not fully sure about the proportions, also it has changed during the ages, but you have a lot of repertoire that is meant to be played on A bass fiddle. Most of these tunes are tunes that are in D, because it makes a lot of sense if you are having a tune that is in D, so you're ending on a D string, and on an open D string, it's very cool to have your open A next door. For example, doing stuff like that, it's easier and you have an open string that is working fine. You can also have, for example, a tune where you have a drone that gives a very nice effect. that you can use instead of the A, the high A only. I think this tuning that is very common and that is very easy to have on a fiddle is probably also the reason why so many tunes were in D. Like the two, the two things fed each other. So the fact of having tunes in D fed fiddles to be tuned like that and also the fact that fiddles could easily be tuned like this fed the fact that we had lots of tunes in D. I think that's just my, my guess once more. If you are a um, newcomer to fiddle tunings, I highly suggest you start with this tuning because it's not really difficult because you still have the usual classical tuning on the three upper strings and just have one different space between the strings here, which is a fourth. So you just have to think one finger less because your string is one tone higher. But it's pretty easy actually to play in A bass fiddle. And also, although it's tuning up your fiddle a little bit, it's on the low string, so the, the one that is the most loose of all of them, so it's not that much of a big deal for your instrument. So I think it's a good tuning to start with. Also, this tuning is the first one of the three categories of tunings I'm gonna talk about. And this one is part of the tunings affecting the bass string. Then I'm also gonna talk about the tunings affecting the highest string. And I'm also gonna talk about a third category, which is the tunings that are open and or modal. So the second of the tunings affecting only the bass string that I want to talk about is a very specific one and maybe the oldest one actually. It is called Gurlausch or Gurlausch sometimes and it is F, D, A, E. So it's a bit the reverse of the A bass tuning, it's just that from the G usual tuning of the low string, instead of tuning up one tone, you tune down one tone to F. And this is a tuning that is found in both Sweden and Norway, but I think mostly in Norway, and it's pretty much a hard on your fiddle tuning, but not only. I also know at least one normal fiddle uh, tune from Sweden that is played on Gorlaus tuning. And it sounds really different, very beautiful and very open. It's not often that we have an F in the tuning, actually. Uh, it does something a little bit hard, terrible or melancholic, I don't know. I, I really, really love Golash and I really want to play more on this tuning. It's a very releasing tuning for your instrument because you're tuning down and still it's very playable. Uh, the string might be a bit loose but it's still very possible to do. Last one of the category of the tunings affecting the bass string is a very extreme one but not in a bad way. It is D, D, A, E. So you're tuning your lower string actually very much down to a low D. So you have the two D's together. 
that's a very odd tuning, but it was actually apparently pretty common. Um, like in the old times, when you play some kind of more baroque-ish music, folk music but that is sounding more baroque-ish. I don't know much about it, to be honest, but my previous teacher, Patrick Andersson, has recorded a couple of tunes um, with this tuning on fiddle and actually mostly on viola d'amore, but the principle is the same, it's very much down-tuned lower string to match the next, next by, the nearby string with the same note, basically. And then you're not gonna play any melody notes on your lower string, you're just gonna use it as a drone. <laughs> terms of tuning because it's very much down and your string is gonna be super loose. I mean my string is very very loose there. It's not damaging for your instrument, it's fine. I mean it's tuning down so your instrument can definitely handle it but it's kind of a big deal still and it's still it's especially a big deal to tune up again. It's a very specific tuning and basically you can have it and play normal melodies on the three other strings but if you're playing in D and you don't have any notes lower than the actual D, it's a very nice thing to have. It gives a very much big resonance on the D and it gives very nice drone. Now let's talk about my second category of tunings. The tunings that are affecting only the highest string. Actually, I have just one tuning in this category, which is G, D, A, D. It's a very nice one, actually very relieving for your instrument because the most tense string you're just releasing it from one tone, which is pretty comfortable for your instrument. It's not a very common tuning and I think it's mostly actually used on Harding fillet, but you might also tune your regular fiddle like that and enjoy a lot of very nice tones. It is mostly used for tunes in G or in D. And um, it is only interesting because of the drone effect you can have between the two higher strings, basically, or for some plucked strings, for example. Um, I have one tune I can play to show you an example of a specific use of this tuning. Part, you could use the low D string you couldn't play the you could not play the same ornament and it would not sound the same and if you want this very high pitched frequency you need to have this is an ornament that you cannot play if your your higher string is not tuned like this basically so it's a very specific tuning as well although you can still play most of the melodies normally on your three lower strings, just the higher string is a bit different. I don't know any Swedish tunes played on that tuning, but if you know one, one of them, please tell me, I would be very very interested, because it's getting to be one of my favorite tunings at the moment, so, <laughs> so I would be really interested to know about that. So now let's talk about open and or modal tunings. So these tunings are tunings in which you cannot really think as you are used to, like in fifth and in terms of logic of the instrument and melody, it's more like open tunings, more like a dat gat guitar as opposed to a classically tuned guitar. You have to more like learn the tunes on the tuning and learn where the fingers are going. And many tunes that you will learn in these tunings are not really possible to play on another tuning, they are like kind of specific. It's not true for all of them though, there are many that you can adapt from uh, one tuning to the other, but usually you will not be able to play the same ornaments and the same double stops and all and the same effects So the feeling is going to be very different. These are the tunings that are the most limited in terms of all the things they can do So they are much less polyvalent than G bass for example, or even A bass um, But they are the ones sounding the most The first open tuning I want to talk about is the open D tuning Which, which is A, D, A D. So this is very good for playing all things in D, obviously. 
What is really interesting about this tuning is that you still have a fifth in the middle of your instrument. So it's just the two external strings that are tuned differently. So it's not as difficult as other uh, open and or modal tunings. If you are used to A bass tuning, this is just one step further in a way. It's actually the first tuning that I played on. <laughs> not even the A bass was the first one, this was the first one. So I'm pretty... I was pretty used to it, not anymore that much. But for example, you can play stuff such as this. So you have this. And then you have a D, like it's super easy to play plus strings and chords with this kind of tuning. The second one of these open or modal tunings that I want to talk about is A, E, A, E. So this is maybe the most challenging one for an instrument that I'm talking about in this video because you're tuning two strings up and not, no string down. But it's still okay. I know many fiddles that have been tuned this way and they still survive, that's fine. And this tuning is basically open A tuning, so A, E, A, E, and it's not extremely polyvalent, but it's really good if you have tunes that are just on two strings and so you can play them in two different octaves without changing anything in your fingers. For example, if I take uh, the Slengpolska Söra Flaka from Småland. on both like high octave and low octave without changing anything. So it's a bit like easy uh, trick to play octave down. I know it's also a tuning that is used in other types of folk music, such as, for example, bluegrass. I'm sure there are more. It's a tuning that was actually pretty common, I think, in Sweden. It's not anymore, I think, because, well, it's a bit harder to to play more tunes on this tuning. You don't have a lot of repertoire that is possible, only what is in A, the tunes that are in A. But still it's used. The tune I just played is from Småland, so it's not from one of the like border areas where you have lots of tunings. It's a region that is actually very far away from Norway and Harding Philly influence and so on. So I guess it was a tuning that was pretty much spread out. I also have many tunes that I've learned on a normally tuned fiddle, on a G-based tuned fiddle, and that I actually realized would probably sound much better in A-E-A-E. So I think there are more tunes that were supposed to be played in A-E-A-E than we know. The third open tuning I want to talk about, which is actually also the last tuning I want to talk about, is the troll tuning, troll stemning. It's pretty famous actually, and it's tuned A, E, A, C sharp. So actually it's like the A-E-A-E, but you tune your E string, your normal E string, very much down to C sharp. And this gives you an A major chord. So you can just pluck your fiddle and you have an A major uh, chord. I highly recommend you to do this tuning if you think that your fiddle is not sounding much. Because the sound you get from all the strings tuned together in resonance with each other is really amazing. You get a lot of power. This tune is called the uh, troll tuning, so it's not really the tuning of the trolls, but troll in Scandinavian languages has a tendency to mean magic. So it's a magic tuning. And you have, for example, the very, very well-known tune called Fanny Tullan, so the tune of the devil. The repertoire in troll tuning is not very big, and it's mostly actually Harding Philly repertoire. So if you play normal fiddle like I do, you will have two like transpose down the notes so that the fits a normal fiddle, a usual fiddle. But you can still tune like that and experience a lot of very interesting harmonies there. This tuning is the one where you really cannot use your usual logic of playing on an instrument tuned in fifth because the logic is really different. You have to think in chords and in position of the fingers instead of in like logic of the melody and fifth. And you cannot do the same fingerings on every string. It just, just doesn't work. So very often the tunes that you play in troll tuning 
are tunes where you don't play just one string at a time, but several, two, even sometimes three. You do a lot of pizzicato, plucking strings, especially from the left hand. And you also have lots of ornaments, and you cannot play all that on a normally tuned fiddle. So those are tunes that you cannot really rehearse, practice, uh, in an instrument that it's tuned more normally, you have to be tuned in troll tuning to actually practice these tunes. A good example is also Fossegrimmen by Magnus Tinnebom. And so you're playing two strings all the time, so you need to have this tuning to play this kind of tunes. This is a specific repertoire for the tuning, kind of. So these are all the tunings I wanted to talk about. I am sure there are way more than that. <laughs> Please, if you know more of them, tell me in the comments or write to me. I would be really interested to hear about them. Now just a bunch of advice, especially if you are a beginner in new tunings and you don't want to damage your instruments, that is a very good concern to have. So first, yes, be careful when you do this kind of tunings, because your instrument, especially if you are never tuned in different tunings than G, D, A, E, your instrument is gonna feel a bit weird. <laughs> it's new to it, it's new to the strings, it's gonna be a bit of a big deal. It's like you when you try a new type of clothing or something like that. It's a bit uncomfortable. All the tunings I've been talking about are totally fine and totally safe to do on a normal fiddle that is in good shape, that is working well, there is no problem about them, your fiddle is not gonna break because you tune one string higher or lower. Still, you have to have a fiddle that is in good shape. If your fiddle has a crack somewhere, or if it's a bit fragile in some way, or you're not sure, it's not, it's not very solid, avoid the tunings that are going up. Because all the tunings that are going up can put some cracks, some more tension, basically it's more tension on the top of your instrument and it can lead to more cracks or it can weaken the instrument that is already a bit weak in a way. So in case of doubt about the state of your instrument, go more to the down tunings than to the up tunings. The down tunings will never, never destroy your instrument. Your instrument is totally able to handle down tunings, actually it's even better for it. It's just the up tunings that can be a bit more difficult. What I would really recommend you to do is to check your bridge like this. And you have to remember that at all times your bridge is supposed to have a right angle there, 90 degrees angle here, not on that side, on the side of you when you're playing, on the side of your chin. If here you have this right angle there, your fiddle is fine, the bridge is not gonna break. But if your bridge is starting to go like this, for example, or in the other direction, then it's problematic. You should check your bridge quite often and you should put it back into its good placing. If you don't know how to do that yourself, because it's a bit tricky and with the tension, it can be dangerous, you can break a bridge, ask someone who knows, a teacher or a violin builder, and learn it so you can do it yourself. Check your bridge regularly, especially when you're doing weird tunings. Also, different tunings take a bit of time. You cannot just tune your fiddle and hope it to stay in the tuning right from the start, two minutes after you have tuned it. You have to expect a little bit of time of adaptation. When it's just the G string tuned to A and reverse and your fiddle is used to that and your string is a bit old, it's gonna hold pretty okay. But the weirdest the tuning, the, well let's say the most unusual the tuning, the more your instrument is gonna need some time to adapt. So for example, if you're going from um, D, D, A, E to troll tuning, for example, it's very good to give your instrument a couple of hours to just settle and you can retune and the strings can settle in their new position in a way, especially if you want to record, if you want to play for a concert or something. If you like to play in different tunings a lot, the best solution is to have different instruments that you can tune in different tunings and keep in this tuning for a long time. This is not possible for everyone, of course, we don't always have different, like, several fiddles and especially not one per tuning that we like to play in. But it's a good option. 
Also, if you have very precious fiddle that you don't want to damage, maybe you're not sure it's an old one or something, it's good to have a cheaper fiddle that you're gonna try your weird tunings on so your good fiddle is safe. Also, remember one thing, tuning up is gonna damage your strings higher. So if, uh, like most Swedish players, you are tuning your lower string from G to A, from A to G and changing all the time, your string is gonna wear out way quicker. This is no big deal, it's just that your strings will live a little less long, basically, especially if you tune up. If you tune down, that's kind of fine. My suggestion is that you try the, all the weird tunings, especially the tuning up, when your strings are already old. So just before changing them, you do all the weird stuff and you have a bit of fun. And then you're gonna remove them anyways. After this video, I'm actually gonna change my strings, because now they have been very much damaged, they were old already, and now they have been tensed, and so on. The down tunings, like a DD8E, for example, or stuff like that, you can do them at any times. It's even very good for your instrument to actually uh, have them when you are putting on new strings. So you can tune your strings a bit lower than the final tension that you want to have with GDAE, and your instrument can get in the tension and your strings can stretch to be there. So it's a good moment to actually practice on your gorlausch, for example. Also, if you want to tune up, I highly recommend that you choose strings that are looser instead of strings that are harder. Usually on brands you have two or three possibilities of tension. You have high tension, medium tension and low tension. If you know you're gonna tune up, put strings with low tension. So your instrument has just less tension on the top. That's just simple. It's just easier for it. Try to choose strings that are softer and not too hard. But as said, none of this tuning is gonna damage an instrument that is already in good shape. So I hope you liked this video, I hope it was full of information that you didn't know about. I would be very interested to know if you have already tried different tunings, and if yes, which ones, and also which ones you're planning to study, to play with, which ones are your favorites and why, and your least favorites as well and why. My personal favorite I think is A bass, uh, although I play mostly in G bass still, and I have soft spots for troll tuning, because it's so different and so special and it allows to play very cool um, plug strings. I really really much like Gorlausch as well and I want to play more in this tuning. And I also have a soft spot for GDAD and ADAD lately. So this is all for today folks. I hope you liked the video. If you can support me, you can do that with all the usual uh, YouTube stuff, liking, subscribing and everything, sharing with your friends, especially the nerdy ones who could be interested in the informations provided here. And you can also support me on Patreon. I'm gonna put the link in the description and on the screen at the end of the video. Thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next time. Hey, Dora.